here with Dallas Cowboys quarterback, superstar Dak Prescott. It's an honor. Thanks for taking the interview. No, no, of course, man. No. Appreciate you Dak, me. how you how you feeling these days, man? You busy? No, I'm, yeah, very busy. I mean, obviously here at the Super Bowl, uh, just busy, just all the festivities. Much rather uh, be preparing for this game, busy right, in that right, standpoint. Right, absolutely. But I'll take it. That's that's amazing you said that because I think your time will come. But after three and five start and all of the naysayers, what was it that clicked that got you guys on track? to make it to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, we just we got a really, really good team and the right type of people, the right type of men. Uh, and, and it was special. I mean, I said this is one of the, my, my favorite teams I've ever been on, one of the most special teams I've been on, because when you're three and five, you know what I mean? It's You're getting scrutinized. Yeah. They're calling for your head. They want the next quarterback or right. this, this, and that. And just to have the team that we have, the support system off, us grabbing arms, us locking the deck right. together, and all the way from the front office down, of us making the trades, doing the things that we needed to do, uh, it was refreshing and it really created a healthy environment yeah. that allowed us to bond and get things going the right way. And you was certainly a catalyst for that, but Amari Cooper, bringing yeah. him in, did you have any influence on that that deal that, that they struck? No, so I mean, obviously I knew there, there was talk of us trying to get somebody, us trying to get a deal done. When, when Amari's name gets popped up, I played against him in college, so I'm, my vote's there, my vote's for that guy. I know, right. I know what he can do, I played against him. Uh, and then when you get him, just to see his quick twitch, how explosive he is, the way he approaches the game, studies yeah. the game, he made that transition easy. He just gets open. It just allowed the offense to open up. Yeah. Playing for the Dallas Cowboys, is it a certain pressure that you feel? Because the pressure comes from everywhere, all right. over. Is it a different type of approach that you take, or you just you know, keep your head down and keep it going? Yeah, you just said that. I keep my head down and I just keep going. I got my blinders on. I control what I can control. Yes. Uh, and the rest of the stuff will take care of itself. Uh, if, yeah. if I can't control it, I'm not going to stress myself out putting a lot of thought into it or whatever. So, I mean, um, it, it adds its pressure if you if you want to dive into that and open yourself up for it. Yeah. But for me, it's about controlling the messages, controlling what I put in my head and what I put in my mind to right. uh, so make sure I stay focused. Well, yeah, we just won the Super Bowl. I think that's uh, – we won 60 for so It's just – everybody's thinking that possibly Brady's going to retire or Gronk's going to retire, but we just won the Super Bowl. So I think, I think everybody's wondering, like, what am I going to do next? Hell, if I know, I'm going to get on my boat. That's what we do. We win the Super Bowls. I don't think – Belichick loses his mind ever. I don't know if he parties at home. I don't know if him and his lady get on his boat and toss back some drinks. Bill Belichick is the consummate professional, and if he wins another Super Bowl, you would expect that a little bit of excitement would come out, but I'm not putting it uh, past him to just be the same guy he always is, which is an incredible coach, and just on to the next thing. I will let you know, as a friend of Adam Vinatieri, that beard was shaved not by his decision. He is a married man to a beautiful lady. He's got 45 kids, and I don't think he's calling the shots at all at home, and I would assume it's not his decision to shave that beard because that thing was glorious, and I think it was a nice exclamation point to the oldest player in the league, which is what he will be probably for the next five years when he refuses to retire and just continue to stack on top of that all-time leading scorer record that he has. To be honest, I knew none of the rules when it comes to broadcasting games. I didn't know when I was supposed to speak. I didn't know how I was supposed to speak. I didn't know who was who, and I think that was probably my favorite part. I went in there completely blind and had a good time, and I think that's what the broadcast booth needs is somebody having a little bit more fun in there and celebrating the game as opposed to the stiffs that they normally put in there for most NFL games. Here's my Super Bowl prediction. Tony Romo is going to get one wrong, and the internet is going to turn against him. I don't like it. I'm not happy about it. I don't want to see it happen. I think Tony Romo has been batting a 1,000, but at some point something's going to go wrong, and the internet's going to turn against him, and he doesn't deserve it. I want to let you know, Tony Romo does not deserve the hate he's going to get if he ever gets one wrong. I'm a huge Tony Romo fan. I think that the Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl in overtime because the Patriots know that if it goes to overtime, Buffalo Wild Wings is giving free wings to every human in America. I think the final score might be 27-24, maybe 27-21. It'll be somewhere in the 20s, and I think the Patriots come out ahead of Sean McVay and the Los Angeles Rams right here in Hot Atlanta, Super Bowl 53. Kelsey, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm just I'm glad to be a part of the Michael Vick experience right now, man. This is definitely the Michael Vick experience because this is a new experience for me. Now, Kelsey, I have to ask you. It was tough watching the last game. Now, I feel like you guys should be here. How hard was it, man? I want to hear it. It's still, it's still tough, man. It's still tough. Uh, 
to come out the way we did and to know exactly what they were going to do um, and, and not be able to capitalize on it. Um, it's, it, it's still has, I still got an empty, still empty feeling in my stomach, yeah, without a doubt. Um, but I'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll go away with, uh, with the work and, and just getting better for next year, knowing that you know, you're that much more experienced uh, going into the next season. Now, this is a weird question, but I got to ask you, who you pulling for? Yeah, I don't know, man. I, honestly, I haven't I haven't made my pick yet. I, I think it's uh, I don't have a, I'm not biased towards any either one of the teams. I mean, we lost to both of these teams uh, during the season, so I think it's um I think the defenses are playing great right now. Uh, both defenses are playing great, and on top of that, um, the offenses have the star power to be able to put up points, 50 point games. Absolutely. So I don't I don't really know what's going on. I just hope for a good competitive game. Tell me this, because we know it'll be a good competitive game two good quarterbacks playing on both sides of the ball, but I want you to talk about your quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, the, the transition from Alex Smith to Patrick. You know, two great quarterbacks, but what made Patrick so special this year? I think you saw, you saw a little bit of it uh, when you were with yes. us out there in KC. I think he's, um what he ha what he brings to the table in terms of his creativity, man. Just being confident in that, uh, confident in his ability um, to instinctually make plays out there. I mean, it's uh, it's something I haven't seen before. He knows he can throw it anywhere on the field, and um, he trusts his guys out there, which is all you can ask for as a route runner, man. What did you say when you watched that no-look pass on film? Because that's never been done in NFL history. I, you, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I've seen it before. So the first time you he seen did that it, before? yeah, he, he does it in practice wow. all the time, man. So it's 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 something that you know, being on the receiving end of a no-look pass, you just always gotta have the mind frame that yo, this thing, even though he's looking. 20 yards the other way, yeah, he, he, can still, he can still find can a way to get it way. right to your chest. So you don't want to get caught off guard. And um, I think, uh, his, like I said, his creativity and, and, and how he plays the game is going to change the game, and it's, it's impressive. Saquon does not like being called Saquads. So now when he makes me mad, I just skip the say part and I just call him quads, and he, he hates it. So everybody out there, call him quads, um, especially if he wins Pepsi Rookie of the Year because I need some revenge if he does. I think I, I talked enough trash during you know, the regular season um, for me to, you know, kind of be a little bit hesitant, even though I was so confident going to the Big 12 championship, because when it comes down to that championship game, I know how our guys are going to play. Um, no, I don't have any, any bets that I have to pay off. Oh, he's going to be unbelievable. You know what? People are going to knock his size. People are going to say what they want about him, but uh, he's a winner. He, he works hard. He earns everything he has. He, he's obviously very gifted, but... He works for everything, and so, you know, he's a great leader in that locker room, and so I, I think he's going to do unbelievably well in the NFL, and so whoever gets him is going to be lucky. I mean, it's easy to say it's Tom Brady. I mean, that's, that's the greatest of all time. It's hard, to, it's hard to argue that or even think about arguing. Got to go with Jarvis Landry. That's my guy. You know, I, I feel like this whole morning I've been going back and forth on who I'm picking. It's going to be a good game. Um, whoever wins, it's either going to be Tom Brady's MVP or I think Todd Gurley the MVP. Uh, I, I can't pick a winner. It's going to be a good game. What AB has taught me about being in the morning receiver is that obviously you got to be hungry. You got to be a savage when you're out there. Uh, we always say it's goat season uh, when it's on the last drive. And that's something that I've learned about. Um, you know, being in his footsteps and you know him to be my mentor uh, means a lot. The best wide receiver in the NFL um, right now, now, that's tough. I have like I'm like, I don't really have, I mean, I would say, I mean, most people would think, oh, obviously it's AB, but I think other guys are like, you know, Michael Thomas, uh, Devontae Adams, uh, those, those are the two guys I love watching, Julio Jones. I mean, those are some, uh, even Tyreek Hill, man, like to be, you know, that small, but still ball and make plays and have those type of numbers. Those are like, those, those are my players to watch. The best nickname? Oh, that's a good question. I, I like I like the bus. I mean, I think that's a good one. White shoes, that was a good one. The snake, that that's one you can't forget. I like the bus though. I think that was that's one you don't forget. When I see C.J. Anderson, he he's the, the guy that you know you say, you know, kind of looks and runs like the bus. He's not afraid to to mix it up in there. He got a little extra down in the stomach area, which. Sometimes it helps. So yeah, I like I like CJ Anderson, but most importantly, I like his game. I am definitely afraid of the Patriots. I mean, as much as we talk about uh, them not winning, uh, we don't think they're going, they always find a way to be in the game. They may not win, 
but it's always going to be a close football game. You know, when can you recall the Patriots being blown out, especially in the playoff game? You just don't see it happen, especially a Super Bowl. It doesn't happen. They'll be in the game, so it's going to be close. I'm, I'm rooting for the Rams. Obviously, I got drafted by the Rams. I would love to see them win. Um, score, it's, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, so maybe like 34-31. I think Jared Goff, if the Rams win, Jared Goff is definitely going to be the MVP because he will have had to put up some significant points under pressure, and he would have made have had to make some big plays during the course of the game, so Jared Goff. I just think A.B. is a phenomenal receiver. I think we all know that, but it's just the stuff that comes with A.B. Sometimes it's getting tiresome of a lot of people. But A.B. sometimes I think is just misunderstood. You know, sometimes he doesn't know how to reach out to guys. So uh, for me, there's a little maturity factor into it, you know. Um, but at the same time, I just I don't want A.B. to be labeled like some of the other guys before him, be more of a about him and less about the team because that's just a bad – you don't want that out there about you. If you're all about yourself out there, it's hard to get picked up by anybody else in the league. So uh, he's a phenomenal talent one of the best receivers in the game today. I just wish that the Steelers and A.B. can find a way to get it together and sit down in the room and, and overcome. Let's get into it about your new head coach. You got to be excited about that. Um, Bruce is a mastermind, certainly a guy who's going to take your game from one level to the next. How do you feel about that as far as right now, what you feeling? I'm very excited about that, uh, the mentality that he has. Uh, his resume says speaks for itself. Absolutely. So I'm just happy to, to link up with him and, and do some big things. Especially at an important time in your career, you have to be excited about, you know, being paired with a guy who's going to know how to put you in the best positions. As far as the weapons, what what do you think you need to add to this team um, in order to, you know, be able to compete each and every week on Sundays and get the most out of your offense? I think we got one of the most talented skill groups in the league, Deshaun yeah. Jackson, Mike Evans. O.J. Howard, Cam Brake, on down. Even young Adam Humphrey is one of the best slots in the right, game. Right. You know, uh, I, I just think all we got to do is add consistency. Yeah. Uh, that's for me. That's from everybody. Just come yeah. out there and get some wins because winning rules. Yeah. Top five, no order, and uh, of course not including myself. Um, you got to throw Khalil and Aaron Donald in there. Man, you got so many guys. Uh, you got to throw Jared McCoy in there. You got to throw Melvin Ingram in there. And uh, I like Jalen Ramsey in there too. Super Bowl prediction, I like, I, you can't go against Tom Brady and the, the Patriots, but I am. Because uh, I'm gonna go with Lieb and, and Todd Gurley and all my buddies. You know, I, I know I know how it feels to win Super Bowl and I know how life-changing and magical that is. So I want uh, those guys to experience that. And MVP, I'm going with uh, Gerald Everett, you know, number number 81 uh, uh, tight end. You know, he's, uh, he's gonna get a lot of balls. You know, if he can get in the end zone two or three times, go for over 200 is his. I call him football here, but just because he like, it's all football with him. You know what I'm saying? It's all football. Um, he's a professional on and off the field. He's the GOAT. Uh, just somebody you can look up to and admire. And, and, and if you want to be like something, look where he came from. He was like the last pick of the draft. Um, and, and just look at his whole life. It's just amazing. So. I, that's just my own little nickname for him, football here. I, I feel like I know him. I feel like we relate. What's up, Tom? Nah, your head don't look like a football head. You ugly, but you don't look like no football head. Your head ain't like a football head. You feel me? But you cool, though. <laughs> nah, I don't think about it. It's what it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get better from that because I'm going to look at film and I'm going to be like, all right, I need to get better. Because I need to be like, I could get him the ball whenever. I need to be in tip-top shape. I could control that. I could control me being in tip-top shape. I could control my sleep, my rest, how I eat, trying to be healthy. I could control that the best way I could. You know, this football. But I can't control, like, how many times I get the ball and stuff like that. I can control what I do when I do get the ball. Yes. The Browns will be in the playoffs till the 19th. Because we're focused. We have all the tools. We're all on the same page. And now it's time to turn up a notch, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're about to take off. Yeah, man, he knows how, how to dance. He knows how to have fun, you know what I'm saying? He's, he, he's a really, really cool person. Why? Uh, that's like I talked to my agent about that one. But um, uh, honestly, man, however I get drafted, I'll be happy about it. But uh, just being from New Jersey, having a lot of pride in my state, you know, I would love to play for the Giants. Oh, this means a lot, man. A lot of work going into this sport, 11 plus years of playing football. 
Um, couldn't do it without my family, my support team. But um, you know, just a blessing come true to be able to have this opportunity to go play in the NFL. You want to go there? I do. Damn. Damn. I'm not surprised that Clemson is a more dominant program than Alabama. Uh, I mean, Alabama is very great. I feel like Clemson and Alabama are, you know, toe to toe right now. That's a lie. He don't even believe that. The most dominant program. Come on, man. That's a lie. They was just better that night. We'll just say that. I haven't even talked to those guys since then, and I don't want to talk to them. So, Aaron Donald MVP score. It's gonna be a low-scoring game. I believe so. Try to possess the ball. They're gonna run the ball a lot on both sides. I don't know. 17 to 23. Rams win. Honestly, if I had to give a prediction of what I think is gonna happen, I would say this. If it's a shootout, the Rams will win the game. If the Rams get on top early and we and they have to make Tom Brady throw the ball to be able to win the game, I think the Rams win the game. Not because I don't think Tom Brady can do it. He can do anything. I just think the pass rush is what makes them so special, which makes the Rams so special. If it turns out to be a low scoring game, or even if it's a high scoring game, but the Rams offense cannot play, if the Rams offense doesn't play good, Tom Brady wins. The Patriots win. Super Bowl MVP, I would say if it, if it was for the Rams, I would say if it doesn't go to the quarterback golf, it goes to Robert Woods. I feel like he's a sleeper that will make the difference, that will change everything for him. Offensively, if I had to pick for the Patriots, it would be Tom Brady. The one rule I'll change is that targeting rule, man. They just throw flags just because it's a hard hit most of the time. And then uh, I wish, I really wish they could do like what the college do, review the hit and see if like they could take the flag back and stuff like that. So I really wish they could add that in. With hits like that, guys get fined and then sometimes it don't be that type of vicious hit. And then uh, it could be a, a key play in the game, you know, they call it unnecessary roughness and it could be a 15 yard penalty, a, a big penalty or whatever. So I would like to see them, you know, kind of like use a replay, replay to uh, kind of, you know, view that, to take the penalty away or just determine if it's an unnecessary hit. I hope they both lose. I have no idea who's going to win. Um, but uh, I just hope, you know, it's a competitive game and uh, we get to see some good football. MVP, I'll go Tom Brady or, or my guy Jared Goff, man. He's, uh, he's a heck of a player and shines in big games. So, um, you know, it'll be fun to, fun to watch two great teams compete. And there you have it. You know who that is. That's heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Wilder. I'm a big fan. Obviously, he's one of the best in the world. Thanks for joining me this morning, man. It's an honor being a big-time boxing fan and a big fan of yours. Honestly, I thought you won that fight a couple weeks ago, but it sets up for another great one. What you think as oh, far as uh, another Wilder Fury 2? Yeah, man, most definitely. I appreciate you, brother. Big fan of yours as well. Thank so you. It's, 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 same respect, brother. But no, absolutely, you know the fight was definitely good. Yeah. You know, me and Ferry, it was. Uh, you know, it was great for heavyweight division. You know, um, the heavyweight division has been silent, it's been dead for so long, and right. now it's like lit. It's on Bringing fire. It back. You know what I'm saying? And yes. everybody loved the fight, and now we gotta run it back because you know I'm a type of guy, I'm a type of champion that yeah. I can't deal with no draws. Yeah, no draws. It's almost I'd rather take a loss than to draw with somebody. It's you know what I'm saying? It's either winner or loser. We know who won, who, who lost. You yes. know what I'm saying? So, yes. you know, it was very controversial, and I, I felt that I definitely did enough to win the fight, even with the two knockdowns, you know. I felt like the count was definitely slow, right. given, you know. Um, and But the thing about it, we don't know how he got up. Yeah. Maybe Jack Reese had some, some smelling yeah, sauce on his breath or something. Yeah, something going on, because the bomber <laughs> threw his bomb, and it connected. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, you know, but it makes up for a great fight. Yeah. We're going to do it again, and uh, we're looking forward to doing it. We're looking like maybe in uh, late April, early May. No Every doubt. Year, looking like maybe Vegas or, or Brooklyn at the I, Barclays I, Center. I will be there. Now, yesterday I seen it 
you and Chad Ocho Seco had a face off. <laughs> yeah. and, and I know Chad is only about six feet tall. It was like he's standing on some blocks or something yeah. because, I mean, it looked like I was looking eye to eye. Yeah, like, What man, was that all about? Yeah, you know, uh, he did pretty good. You know, uh, they always do the stare down. I done done a lot of, yeah. you know, the stare down is like you just it's really, yeah, it's man. Like the temple, it's a staple for the beginning of the fight. Yeah, and it yeah. can get intense as well, too, He's looking no in another man's eye. You try to get so deep to where you look at his soul, you know. Yeah. That's, the, that's what I try to do. And uh, you know, man, he did the little stare, the, the right. face off, and see how how intense it got. And yeah. I think he did a pretty good job. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he did. He, and he's a he was a really really good football player. You're a great boxer. What, what's your connection to the game of football? I see you here on Radio Row. Yeah, you know, interacting with people. Like, what's your connection with the game? And if you got a prediction on who's gonna win? What would your prediction be for this Super Bowl 53? Right. Well, you know, growing up, I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, so gotcha. you know, known for the football, you know, with the Chris and Todd, and you yeah. know, being a youngster, that's what we wanted to do growing up, seeing those, seeing those guys, seeing people have school spirit, right. and then you know, we didn't we didn't have a uh, professional um, team, team yeah. in Alabama, so like. Crimson Tide was the thing, so you know. Got gotcha. you. Used to play. I used to be a, like a run. I used to be the quarterback. And I used to play wide receiver. Oh, no you know, doubt. wide receiver no coming doubt. up in high school yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So with the height I, and you know, and exactly, you know, give me that fade route. Yeah, let me go up and go get up it. And get you know it. what I'm talking yeah, about? It was like so, LeBron James said. You know, wondering if LeBron James could be a receiver or a tight end. Yeah. I know you would have been a pretty good one. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, I was very familiar with football and, and, and loved the sport, you yeah. know. And um, with the with the the, um, the game coming up, you know, I'm a champion. The Patriots is champions. Champion, champion you know? like the champion. So, champion like the champion. That's Tom Brady is my guy. Yeah. You know, he's a big boxer fan yeah. as well, too. And I got to say, and still. And champion. still champion. Okay.